Well, last episode working on the kit car, we showed you building up all the rear ends of our front wings and building up this little frame for our little side cubbies. And apparently I quite enjoy welding skins onto frames. So I have selflessly volunteered to cut out the sheet metal to go over this. And then we're gonna move on to the dashboard, which obviously we promised on the last episode. Now this time, hopefully we're gonna live up to the promise, but before we get to it, we are gonna finish up here. And there's a couple of other bits of metal work on the roof and the front end of the car that we'd like to get to first. So let's get cracking. Now, while we wait for that to cool off, which we're giving quite a while because we don't want to have any ripples in it, we're going to move on to the roof, which is a pretty simple two-piece affair. We've got a nice big piece of 0.7 mil sheet metal that we're putting over the top, and that's going to form the outer skin up here. Now, we're going to take this really, really slow because we really don't want to get any distortion in that because we can't get to it from underneath to tap anything out. So we've got to make sure that this comes out right first time. We're also putting in a piece of bar stock behind. This is a piece of three mil thick uh, steel flat bar that's going to sit a bit lower and that's the shelf that the removable roof piece is going to fit down onto. Now hopefully we can get all of this done. I'm feeling a bit of rain started so we're going to have to try and get a wiggle on here so uh, bear with while we get going. Well, thankfully the weather didn't betray us too badly and the top of the car is cooling off quite nicely now. So we're moving on to this little front piece that I mentioned. Now underneath here looks a little bit goofy at the minute. Now if I could just lift up the bonnet real quick, you'll see the solution. So we're going to put a little plate in underneath and this is going to act as a little bit of a weather seal and it's going to give somewhere that if you look down on the front of the car, there's just kind of some metal there rather than a complete void in between these two pieces. With all those panels sorted, we're gonna start working on the dashboard frame, as I promised at least one episode ago. And the bit we're gonna start with is the center section. Now we're gonna use two DINs here so that we can put in a seven inch touchscreen like Android tablet head unit. And we have these two single DINs, which we can use as a facsimile to build the little framework that a proper two DIN will fit into. Now the other parts we're gonna put on this center section include some air vents and some heater controls. Now we're doing it as three separate pieces across the dashboard. We're gonna have a center section, which is by and large bolted in, and then two pieces that are gonna largely just clip into place around it. One across the driver's side, which will include the uh, gauge clusters, um, light, uh, headlight controls and various other bits, and of course the fuse panel access. And on the passenger side, it will be a panel that encloses the heater matrix, the blower motor, and everything else around there, including the ductwork for the heaters. Now, in addition to these two little DIN units, the parts we're using include this from an E46 uh, 3 Series. This is a BMW unit, and it solves a couple of different problems in one go. Mostly, it has two independent vents, so that we can have left and right vents open or closed, depending if there's one or two people in the car, and they're obviously directional, and they close off completely, so we don't need to buy butterfly valves to go on the heater matrix, which obviously saves us a bit of cash. And, second hand, this is very, very cheap. Now this vent is quite neat because it has an additional control in it that most other ones don't. On the E46, the E38 and I think the E39 as well, BMWs, the 3, the 5 and the 7 series, um, they have this uh, extra little temperature adjuster that sits between the two vents and that, that allows you to independently control the temperature of the face blowers the, in the centre of the dash compared to the rest of the car. So you can have cold air blowing on your face, so if you want to try to stay awake or you just want something cold on your face but you can have the whole temperature of the car running a little bit warmer so it's quite a neat idea but it just uses a little rotary a uh, little rotary dial in the top and operates a Bowden tube like you would for a regular valve so that combines both the blower vents our uh, shut off valves and temperature control for the heater matrix into one unit which is really convenient before I found that, I was going to use this, I think, Passat, or certainly Mark IV Golf, like turn of the, turn of the century, sort of 2000 era um, control system from VW, which has a heater control. Now it has a much longer throw on its um, 
heater control, so we'd have to potentially gear that down or use less of the sweep, which isn't as ideal. And it also has this big selector that goes through, and it has two different arms on the cams at the bottom. As you can see, they move around in different orders, and that allows you to select different uh, routing for your air. But we have no need for that. We don't have a nice fancy system to redirect our air around to lots of different areas. We have four outlets and some butterfly valves that control them either open or closed in the units or on the back of the heater matrix itself. So the only piece we actually really need out of this is the switch. This is a four position switch and we only have three positions on our fan so one of them will be superfluous and there's also a recirculation button which we can remove as well. But I think this cut down into pieces and just removing this circular control is the easiest way to deal with the problem or at least it's a good first step to deal with the problem and we're going to package all of this together something like that. Now that looks a little bit messy, but basically we're going to build a framework around the DIN so that we have that size set and then extend the framework up so that it holds the vents across like this and then put the hazard switch uh, and the heater control down on this side. I've just used a couple of rivnuts in the top spar to attach on the vent unit and obviously put the dins in so we can see how things are starting to line up. But now we need to cannibalize this to get the rotary switch out to see how it's going to line up over here and also find some way to mount the um, hazard switch. Now this is also the hazard relay so that's why it's quite so massive and we need to embed this somewhere around about here I think. So we we'll try and work out a way to mount this effectively uh, without just screwing into it, otherwise maybe we just screw into it and see if it still works. So after no small amount of butchery, we've managed to get the part that we wanted out of this, and that is the four position rotary switch, and I've also cut down all of the faceplate and the light bar that goes across and lights up all of the dials. So there's various bits of clear plastic that have come off. Ooh, put that over there again. Um, and I've also removed the recirculation button because we don't need that. So this can all get closed in. And we're once again gonna 3D print our way out of the, this particular problem. I've also then gone and added in the last couple of bits of framework. So this is going to sit at the bottom like that. And the hazard switch is going to sit just up there and as I say we'll print a little housing that fits into this section that holds both of these in and we'll design that up maybe on a stream again some other time. Was the first time I've managed to sit in the car in quite a while and I'm really quite pleased with how everything fits. We've obviously got gear shifter in without the cables on, wheel, all the indicator controls and we've got our centre section which is now a fixed portion of the dashboard frame. Now originally this was going to be a removable piece, the third one with the passenger side and the driver's side framework coming all the way around, but given we've got this big frame around the um, fuse box, we thought we might as well continue it across because actually having this piece removable doesn't help us a great deal. The important parts are being able to remove stuff off the top. So this is now going to be two separate sections on the top which will come off and one which will, well, one removable piece which will go around the front, but the, um, the framework itself down to these vents won't be removable. This is welded in all the way from the A-pillar all the way across to this A-pillar on the driver's side, although I haven't put the piece in yet because I need to work out whether or not this is going to drop down or whether it's just going to sit high, come all the way across and then dip. So once I've got that worked out, I'll add that last piece in. As for the actual layout, well, as I say, this is the first time I've been sat in the car, and although the steering column at the moment is as short as it will possibly go so that we can work out clearances for everything else, at the moment, it's a little bit far away from me. Obviously, when it pulls forward, it will do better, but if I pull it forward right now, the steering wheel comes off. 
which isn't entirely helpful. But this is about the position that I'd be in in the car. And as you can see, I can reach the controls, which will be a little bit further forward anyway. Gear stick is all good. I can reach the hazard button, which will be up here. I can also reach the vent controls for temperature, opening, closing, and reach the, um, the knob, which will be down here to adjust the fan speed. The only one which is a little bit far away right now is the light control. And the light control is going to go just down here. And that, so far, is the only one that's slightly too far away. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do, deal with that. I could move it over to this side and even have it as a vertically mounted rotary switch down here. Or I could leave it here and just have it so that the worst case is I just have to um, unloosen the top half of my seat belt, not the bottom of the lap belt, just to do that and pull it round. But I'm not entirely convinced by that idea. We'll see how that actually pans out when we come to wire that in, or rather build a little surround for that to go into. So you can see here the panel that we were working on earlier for the cover on the storage pods is all finished. It's primed. It's really nicely shaped as well. There is not too much rippling across it. I think whatever very minor bits there are are completely salvageable based on what we've done elsewhere. And as you can see, it still works and the hinge works really nicely. It needs a couple of little stops putting in, but the edge down here doesn't clash with the panel on the bottom of the side pod intake for our scoop here, which is really, really good news. I was a little concerned whether or not it would stay the same shape and whether or not it would clash, but it's all good. So I'm going to call that done and we'll work on building the other one off camera because you've already seen us do one of these, so we might as well do something else. Coming up to that roof panel we put in behind the windscreen, I'm really, really happy with how this came together technically. Um, it didn't warp too much, the welds went down really nicely, everything just seemed to fit, and this little lip on the back, although we haven't welded it all the way across, I just don't think it's going to need that much weld across it, and I don't want to put too much more heat into this panel. It's really well secured, and it'll stop whatever roof we put on from flipping backwards, give us a really good, solid position to mount it off. However, both Chris and I agree that we're not really happy with how it looks on the car. Because you've got the A-pillars coming up the side, it suddenly transitions into a flat, which is very different from the sort of curved, round nature of the A-pillars. And the windscreen just sort of comes up and just ends all of a sudden. And it looks like there's a piece missing. If you look at the other cars on the driveway, there's a lot of cars where the uh, windscreen kind of sweeps up into the roof line. And the ones that have a more square uh, edge to the, the windscreen, lower down, where it doesn't quite extend as far back you have this little bit of bodywork that sits across the front and that's the transition into the roof line so i think what we're going to have to do is make something that sits on the top of this panel and i'm probably just going to make that out of foam for a couple of reasons one i can shape it really easily and that means we can take a little bit more off a little bit more off and really think about how we want the shape to be and if we do go too far it's not too bad we can just grab another piece of foam reshape it and it's all good if we we're doing that with metal um, we'd have to obviously weld it on and then clean it up and, and it would be a lot more time consuming. But actually the welding of it is one of the other major problems. If we put a lot of heat into it, it's probably going to warp, particularly given the curves that we're going to want to put in on this side where it's going to roll over the edge of the car, over this way into the windscreen and over the back into here. So I don't particularly want to put too much heat into any part of this, not least the, the overall skin that's going to be on the back when it has some compound or some complex curves in it. I don't think that's going to be a, a good way to do it and I'm not good enough to make that right. And I can't even, if it does dip in, I can't get into the back in order to to beat it into the right shape I'd have to do something else so I'm just not particularly thrilled with that idea so foam some resin and possibly some fiberglass over the top just to give it a little bit more strength and we'll think about that and how we're going to shape this basically not today <laughs> you're going to go away take some pictures do it in photoshop and see what's going to look decent so the other panel that we put in across the front, right behind this roundover, kind of works okay, but it's not quite long enough. It really should have come back a little bit further. And what's more annoying is I actually had the material on this piece to do that, and I cut it off thinking I only needed to go right up to the back of this spar, because that's roughly where the end of this rollover piece comes to. It just rolls over, and this spar sits in line at the back. Unfortunately, because we have a clearance gap for the bonnet to be able to fit past it, there is a little bit where it just drops straight down, about two inches at each end. 
Other than that, I'm really happy with it. It's actually surprising how much better it looks just not being able to see through the gap onto the ground, although we'll have the splitter in there eventually, obviously. It just looks so much better, and it's kind of weird that such a small thing would make such a big difference. So that's where we're up to on the car. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell, like, and let us know in the comments what you think of the build so far. You can also go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy t-shirts like the one I'm apparently not wearing, as well as long sleeve t-shirts, hats, baseball caps, all sorts of stuff ready for the summer. If you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month and every single one of those dollars goes into building these projects. We couldn't do this without our patrons or at least we couldn't do it as quickly even though this has been quite a long build as it stands. Thanks very much for watching. Do remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we'll see you in the next episode. That'll be easier once it's bolted in. Ah, and the, when that's attached, and I'm not stepping over a microphone.